And hello, fellow tankers, Space Bandit here with another episode of World of Tanks. And today we are in the Polish Tier 9 medium tank, CS59. I was slowly progressing in this grind and I eventually did get to the top tier, CS63, which is quite a nice tank, to be honest. I haven't played a lot of games in that tank simply because I haven't been in World War II mode that much lately, boys and girls. Yes, I haven't been playing in this mode that much. The reason why is because I'm enjoying the Cold War. The reason why I'm enjoying the Cold War is not because of the economics, because economics is really, really bad and everything is so expensive in that game mode. I don't know, it's just, that's the one thing that's really stopping me from playing it more because one thing that I do enjoy about that mode is no RD. Man, if there was no RD in World War II mode, it would have been fantastic. Simply put, it is a dream to play without RD. You can take different positions, you can be more aggressive in your play. You are allowed to make plays that are much more dangerous in Cold War mode than World War II mode. Even with true vision, if you know how to play your tank, if you know the strengths, if you know the way you should be positioning your tank, you can take more aggressive positions. As long as the lanes of fire are not there for the opposition to shoot you with true vision mode, you'll be just fine. That's why my enjoyment level is so much higher. And another thing to mention too, the games last a lot longer than they do in World War II mode. Since the update came out, I played a total of one game in World War II mode, guys. And the reason why is artillery. That's my only reason why. And the only game that I played in World War II mode, I got hit by artillery and set on fire. So just right after that game, I left and started playing Cold War again. Having said that, I haven't given up on World War II mode. I'm still gonna play in that mode. It's just at this point in time, I find more enjoyment playing at Cold War. And I mean, I've seen you guys post underneath my videos and some of you mentioned that you haven't even looked at the Cold War mode. And I understand that because some of you might be more used to that game style and the fact that the economics are so bad in the Cold War. But I'm telling you guys, it is worth it. It is worth it, especially if you're one of those players that are a little bit more aggressive, that wants to take chances. Cold War mode right now is quite nice when it comes to that. And the games are relatively close for the most part. Regardless, we are in a World War II mode. We are in CS59 on map Cliff. And this game is going to be quite interesting because we're going to find ourselves on a back foot for the majority of the game. And we're going to try to even up the score with the opposition. Like we're always going to be losing in this game. And we're going to try to keep this somewhat close so that we can find a way to win the game for the team. So initially, like I always do on this map, we tried to push the one and two lane. But my team didn't really want to move up there. As you can see, we have a bunch of tanks sitting on one two lane. And there are some heavy armored vehicles. There's like IS-7. Our IS-7 is over there. And he didn't push up. Only our light tank pushed up the one and two lane. So I decided not to commit suicide. And I decided not to move up with my team. Instead, I was going to try to help the west side of the map. But we run into this 100 LT. So we're going to try to put some shells into him. He's not paying attention to us. He wants to go directly for our RD. So we're just going to... Drain him down in health as much as we can. If he's not paying attention to us, he should be paying attention to us, trying to take us out of the game instead of going directly for Artie. That was his mistake. At the same time, I noticed there's a heavy tank already sitting at G4, the opposition's heavy tank. So I started using this rock on my right-hand side to make sure he doesn't hit me. At the same time, I want to get rid of this 100 LT who's completely oblivious to me. I don't know if he wasn't paying attention to his map or if he just didn't see me. I'm not sure, but... He could have easily taken me out of the game if he wanted to, if he just started paying attention to me. As you can see, that rock protects me from these guys that are currently sitting at G4. We completely lost the east side of the map, so we're going to be playing out of this position very defensive. And taking some pot shots, there's this IS-7 over there. Unfortunately, we won't be able to pen him, so we're going to have to switch to our APCR rounds. Because from this angle and him sitting on top of the cliff, it's going to be hard for me to pen him. And pay attention to this IS-7 because I'm going to run into him at some point later on in the game. And the game is going to be really close, guys. So pay attention to that. T-57 right there. We put a shell into him. We have to be really cautious. That guy can easily clip us out. So we're going to try to lose our sixth sense over here. And then poke out again and try to put damaging hit into him. 
We're getting hit from the other side now. Looks like this Tiger Shark is coming from this side of the map. But he goes behind the hill and we're not able to put a shell into him. As you can see, we're in pretty brutal, pathetic position right now. Because we're surrounded. There's really literally nothing I can do. I'm stuck behind this rock. I have to pay attention to that light tank on my right hand side or in front of me. I also have to pay attention to those two heavy tanks on my left hand side or G line. So yeah, there's absolutely nothing I can do. All I can do is just lose my six cents and pop up every once in a while, take some pot shots like this one right here on T57 and pay attention to the light tank. But since light tank is not engaging me, I'm gonna try to get this T57 out of the game. That was the thinking anyway. Then the E75 pops up, so we put a shell into him right there. And we're gonna keep on doing the same thing. We won't let these guys that are hovering from the top of the cliff, we won't let them progress any further. So we're gonna keep on paying attention to them and keep on spotting them. And hopefully somehow we can get out of this pretty brutal situation. So we're gonna lose our sixth sense again and we're gonna rethink. What do we do here? What do we do here? I think my only play right now is keep poking out and spotting these guys. At the same time, I'm paying attention to the two line to see what my friendlies are doing. And looks like they've won that area of the map, which is great. So as you can see, the IS-7 is moving up already. And the TD is still sitting around the corner over there. So I asked them to climb up on top of that hill over there so that maybe they can spot and we can see where the rest of their opposition is, their heavy tanks. I don't know where they went at this point. At the same time, I didn't realize that Tiger Shark is already dead. So I should have been able to move up. But I think in a split second, I'll realize this. And we will move up eventually. We keep on spotting this area here, though, just to make sure. This E75 is still lurking over there. So he can potentially put shells into me. Once he switches attention to my friendies at the two line, I will make my move. And that's exactly what I thought he did right here. So I'm going to make my move right now. And we're going to try to engage him at the same time. Fortunately, RTD dies and it's 2v4 situation right now, which is not optimal or 2v3 right now. So the game is still winnable, but we need to play it right. We still have enough HP. Unfortunately, that E75 did not go the other way and he is paying attention to me. I didn't expect him to make this play. He's still sitting in the back over here trying to hit me. But because I have enough HP to engage him, that's exactly what I'm going to do. We're going to come up close to this rock over here. And we're going to try to put some shells into him and side scrape. Well, first we're going to poke. He's already here. And actually, I should have side scrape over here. That's probably a bad play. Because I should have been able to maintain my HP. But I knew I can win this battle because I had more HP. Yet I did not anticipate or expect him having the smaller gun. And because he had a smaller gun, he's able to put another shell into me before I can actually take him out of the game. Which was a bad play because now it makes me a one shot to the opposition IS-7. For sure. Or close to one shot anyway. And a two shot to the M60. So RTD is still alive at G2. So we're going to pay attention and see if he spots anything over there. So at this point I realized, you know what, I can make my move right here. And take back the control of the map and maybe take that M60 out of the game. So that's exactly what I wanted to do right here. I expected the opposition's IS-7 to engage our TD, but I was hoping that he was not going to poke from around the hill. Because if he did poke from around the hill, I could have stayed in the position I was in to support my TD. And unfortunately, IS-7 makes that play. He does go all the way around the corner. And I honestly, I didn't expect him to make that play, but he did. So now my only thing to do is to take that M60 out of the game as quickly as I can. So we're going to see if we can spot him over here. We can't see him. So he's already moved up somewhere. Where is he? So we're going to try to help our RTD right now. Unfortunately, RTD gets taken out and the M60 makes his way around the corner of the cliff. So that was a misplay on my part. The timing just wasn't right. I didn't expect the IS-7 to make that play and go around the corner and take our RTD, he had enough HP to do so. I probably should have just turned around and went back to try to support RTD instead of trying to chase the M60. But in hindsight, that's the decision I made. And now I'm in a position where I need to try to carry this game, unfortunately, or clutch it right at the end. So because of this and because of the fact that I'm only by myself, I decided to get myself in a position 
which is advantageous. So I was thinking, get the high ground, get myself on top of the cliff, and from here I can outspot pretty much anyone. Well, I don't know if I can outspot the M60, but I think my view range would be quite similar to M60, so we can spot each other. At least I would know if IS-7 is coming after me, and that would be more critical because M60 is only a one shot, so he's not really a threat to me. I can easily engage him 1v1 and kill him because he cannot one shoot me, especially in this meta. There's no way he can one shoot me putting 441 alpha, although it's possible, but very unlikely. So I can easily engage him. The problem is the IS-7. He can easily one shoot me in this situation. So we're gonna, I tried to get myself behind that wreck right here, but I bumped it too hard and the wreck fell down. So we're just gonna have to try to poke the ridge right here and see if we can spot any of these guys. We can't spot anything. All of a sudden, someone started capping. So we're gonna have to go and reset. And to reset on this side of the map, there's a really good position I can get myself into, position K6. And that's exactly what we're gonna do, is we're gonna get ourselves in that position. We're just gonna try to get as far away from the central area of the map as possible so that we don't get spotted crossing. We do spot IS-7 crossing through here. And to be honest, I could have stopped there and put a shell into him right there as well. But I wanted to reset for whatever reason. You know, I made some misplays in this game when I'm looking at it right now, which could have made it so much easier for me to win it. Anyway, we're going to come from this area here. We're going to try to hit this M60 and take him out of the game. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We have to be expected to be spotted and we will be spotted once we fire at him. So we got to pay attention to that. We're going to poke out. He's right there. He's not even looking at us. So we're able to take him out of the game. And now the IS-7. So we know that IS-7 will be coming for us. And now all we got to do is use that Tiger Shark in front of us to provide cover when he is charging us. So the idea was if he's charging us, track him or hit him in the track anyway. And then take him out of the game. That was the idea here. But he is smart enough not to come from my right side. He comes from my left side instead. And he does manage to pen me, but he doesn't take me out of the game. We managed to pen him at the same time. Can we take him out of the game right here? Just aiming this shot up. We should be able to beat his reload. But now we realize we have no premium rounds left. <laughs> and we hit his top plate. We bounce our shell. And he takes us out of the game. Man, that was unfortunate. I didn't realize I ran out of premium shells in this situation guys big big mistake because this game was a win i made all the right plays in the right situation i mean some plays i could have made better but from my perspective at the time i thought i made all the right plays except for my shell management and the fact that i didn't manage my premium shells properly i should have been shooting the m60 with my standard ammo and then I would have enough premium shells to go through the upper plate of the IS-7. At the end of the day, it wasn't meant to be, but we brought it so close. And the opposition's IS-7 had a very good game, which you'll see on the end plates later on. Anyway, we put up 5.1k damage in this game with about 700 assisted. This gives us only class 2, which is surprising. But I guess a lot of people were grinding this tank at the time and they were putting up really good results in this tank. So I would assume that with a loss, it makes sense that it's only a class two. Anyway, we finished on top of the team with 1053 base XP, almost 6K combined. And if you look at the opposing team, their IS-7 player had 5.5K damage. He had a very good game as well. So congratulations to him for killing me at the end. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video going forward. I will still have content from World War II mode. I still have quite a few replays to show you guys. At the same time, I'll be talking a lot more about Cold War mode as well. So I'm not really giving up on any of the game modes. You'll see both on my channel, but I would strongly suggest that you check out the Cold War because it is a fantastic mode and I do enjoy it at the moment. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. That's it for now. Until next time, happy tanking, Space Bandit, checking out.